Okay, first off, that intro is uh, ridiculous. I'm sure you've heard it a couple of times by now, but it's still cracking me up. Uh, okay, so in this video, we're going to continue on with our React basics, uh, and we are going to learn about props. So props are a way that we can pass data uh, into our component. So in the last video, we looked at how a component can manage its own state, and now we're going to look at how uh, one component can manage another component state, or one component can manage a collection of components' state. So in our example from the last video, uh, we've got this clicked and then however many times we have clicked the button. Uh, so again, if we click different buttons, uh, they're remembering how many times they themselves have been clicked. But every single one is saying clicked and then this, clicked and then this, clicked and then this. It's not very interesting. It's not very engaging. Uh, so what if we wanted to test out a few different options to see which one was more engaging to our users? We could say, you have clicked this many times. We could say, how many times do you think you can click the button? We could say, have you tried clicking this button? Uh, there are a few different options um, that we might want to experiment with. Um, but we want to be able to keep reusing the same component. So if we have a look at our button, we probably want to reuse a lot of this button. So we probably want to reuse the fact that it can remember how many clicks uh, it has had. We probably want to keep this function that's going to set that uh, every time we click the button. Really the only thing that we want to change is just this little bit here, this text here that says clicked. So back in our app.js file, we basically want to be able to reuse that whole component, but just be able to dynamically pass in a little bit of state. And we're going to do that via a prop. So the way we can do that is from our app.js file, where we're actually rendering our button, we could say, well, we want the title to equal, uh, you have clicked, and then we could have another button that says, uh, have you tried clicking? And we're just gonna get rid of the rest of these buttons and just focus on two different buttons. Uh, and also up the top here, we're no longer using message, so we can get rid of that and we're no longer using the logo, so we can tidy up our component a little bit. Okay, so we've got this new title prop that we're passing into the component, um, but the component doesn't really have a way to access that at the moment. Um, like if we were to just write uh, console log title, for example, and then save this and head over to our browser, uh, you'll see that we get title is not defined. And if we have a look in the console, um, we've got that error as well. So we can't access this directly as title because title hasn't been declared anywhere. Um, but every single React component um, gets a special parameter passed to it called props. Um, and so if we were to now console log out um, what props is set to, so you see we're console logging out uh, those props. And the first time through, uh, we have a title key, which is set to you have clicked. And then the second time through, we have a title key, which is set to have you tried clicking. So they're the two messages that we, or the two titles that we passed into uh, our button component. And you'll see because we have these two button components, that's why it's rendering out twice. Uh, also, we can get rid of this other line that is console logging out because we no longer care about our num of clicks. You'll see that we have each of those sets of props logging out. Um, and so if we come back to our app um, and then we were to pass um, an additional parameter in called, uh, let's just say, has clicked, and let's set that to uh, false. And then if we save this, you'll see that our first button now has a title prop, and it also has has clicked. Um, but our second uh, component only has that title prop. So you can imagine each one of these um, values that we're specifying that we want to pass down into our component are all being bundled up by React. They're all being collected up into one big uh, JSON object, which is being passed into our uh, button component via this props parameter. So in that case, if we only cared about the title prop, we could console log out props.title here. And if we head back to our browser, we should just see those two messages printed out to the console. Okay, great. So we've got that state into our component. We've passed it in as a prop, um, but we don't really want to just console log it out. We want to change the text that's in the button to that message. So back in our button component, we're going to get rid of the word clicked here. Uh, and we're going to replace num of clicks rather than showing how many times we've clicked the button. Um, we're just going to render out props.title. And if we save that, we should see these change to have you clicked? Oh, sorry, you have clicked and have you tried clicking? So now uh, we have our custom messages, which is really good. And if we wanted to have a third button here, 
we could duplicate this and say, don't click this button. And then in our browser, we're going to have a third button. Um, but we want to also uh, display somewhere how many times we've clicked so that we can uh, keep a track of that as well. So rather than just rendering out this button, we want to render out this button, and then we want to render a span next to this button that has that information. It's going to get a little complicated if we keep just writing all of this stuff on one line. And so uh, when we're writing our React components, if we want to um, render out multiple lines, uh, we need to use the rounded brackets or the parentheses. Um, so we need to wrap what we're returning in those brackets. And then I'm just gonna move these onto some new lines just to make it a little bit clearer. So we have a button um, and inside that button, we've got props.title. And then next to that button, we want to render a span um, that says the number of times that we've clicked this button and then space times and an exclamation mark just to make it exciting. Uh, and now when I save, and we go back to our browser, you'll see that this failed to compile. So we've got a syntax error here. So basically what this error is saying uh, is that anytime we create a React component, we can only return one root node uh, back from our return statement. That root node can have multiple children. So if we were to move this span within our button and we could have many, many spans within that button. Um, that would satisfy this. Obviously it looks a little bit silly, um, but that satisfies um, our requirement from React because this outer button is the, is the root node that we're returning from our React component. Um, but we actually want that um, message to be displayed outside of the button. So we do want this on the outside. Um, another thing that we can do is we can wrap this whole thing in a div. So again, we're now just returning one div from our uh, component and that has a button and a span within it. And that looks like it's satisfied our requirements. Um, the other thing we can do is we can actually remove this div altogether. Um, and this is gonna return a React fragment. And so if we, if we have this div here, it's actually gonna um, render that div out to the browser. And so we have an ac extra element there that we don't need. Um, and so if we get rid of that, this satisfies React's requirement to, um, to just return one root node, uh, but it doesn't actually render an element to the page. But if we save that, we're gonna see that um, the number of times is gonna drop underneath the button. And that's not really how we want it to look in this video, and we're not gonna cover too much styling. So I'm just gonna leave this div here um, just so that it looks correct. Awesome, so now we can reuse that button component um, to remember how many times we've actually clicked the button, but we can have completely customized messages. So we can pass in what we want to actually display in that button from its parent. So this is awesome. Uh, but what if we wanted to take this one step further um, and we wanted that parent component, so the app.js file, uh, we wanted that to know the total number of clicks across all of our buttons. So every single time any of the buttons get clicked, we want to render a message down here to show the total number of clicks across all of our buttons. So that sounds like a pretty good use case for use state. Uh, so let's bring in use state from React. And inside our app component, we are going to call use state um, and we're gonna pass it the value zero. So this is the, um, the initial value for our number of clicks across all buttons. And remember that is going to return us um, an array of values. And in there, the first value that we're gonna get back is going to be our actual variable. So that's total num of, whoop, of clicks. And then we get back that function to actually set the total num of clicks. Awesome. So now if we console log out our total num of clicks and head back to our browser and open up our console, uh, so each of these buttons are working correctly. We're seeing uh, each one is updating how many times it has been clicked, um, but we still have this zero. I'll just quickly get rid of all of this other junk from rendering out so we don't get confused. So that's inside our button. We were just logging out this title. So now we should just see um, that value zero and every single time we click, that's not actually updating. So each of these uh, 
button components are retaining their own state, um, but we're not telling that parent, hey, something has changed. And unfortunately, from inside our component, we can't really uh, pass a value back up to our parent. So we're returning this uh, this markup from our from our component, but we can't return that markup and also, I don't know, add a prop that says increase the total number of clicks or something. Uh, that's not going to work for us. And so we need a way for our parent to be able to let these children components, these button components, tell it when something's changed. So the way we do that is from the parent, we can declare a function called increment number of clicks. And inside here, we want to set total number of clicks to whatever the current total number of clicks is uh, plus one. So this is very similar to um, the function that we wrote within our button component. So now we need a way to actually pass that function down to those button components so that the button components themselves can call this function every time they've been clicked. Uh, and thankfully in JavaScript, uh, functions can be treated just the same way as any other data. And so we can actually pass that function down as a prop. And we can copy and paste that to each of our three buttons. And so now from within our button component, we can access that function by calling props dot uh, increment total num of clicks. And if we do the open closed uh, brackets, that's going to actually call the function. So now anytime our button is clicked, it's going to call this handle click function. Uh, that's going to set the total number of clicks for this specific button to whatever that is plus one, but then it's going to call that function from the parent increment number uh, increment total number of clicks, uh, which if we have a look at that, is going to set the total number of clicks to the total number of clicks plus one. So that's going to update the parent that one of these buttons has been clicked. Uh, so let's have a look and see if that's working. So now we start out with zero, so that's that's good, that's right. And then every single time we click, we get a big error saying increment total num of clicks is not a function. So I guess down in our button component, when we are trying to call props.increment total number of clicks, um, this is not actually a, uh, a function. So let's just console log out the props that we have from within our component. And when we click one of these, we should still get that error. But if we scroll down in our uh, console, we'll see these are the props that we're getting passed in. And there is this increment num of clicks function. So if we have a look at our component, I've said increment total num of clicks when that should actually be increment num of clicks. So now when I save that, I'll refresh this so it doesn't have all those scary errors. And then every single time we click, uh, you'll see that that number is getting updated. We're also dumping out the props, uh, but in between that dump of props, you'll see that this value is incrementing each time. So that's awesome. We've we've successfully passed that data back up to that parent component from within the button. Um, so now we just need to render that out. Okay, so we can close this and head back up to our app.js. Um, and we'll also get rid of this console log while we're here. Um, and then we've seen that this is uh, rendering out correctly. So now we just need to add it to our markup here. Um, so inside our header, we have our three buttons. Um, and then I'm just going to add a paragraph tag. And again, because we're accessing a JavaScript variable, we need those rounded brackets. And then we are just going to render out total num of clicks. And in front of that, I'm just going to say total colon, just so we have a little prompt as to what this value actually means. And now if we head back to our browser, we've got total 19, which if we add up 17, one and one, that sounds pretty right to me. And every single time we click any of those buttons, it's going to update uh, that value. So just to quickly recap what we covered in this video, we learned about props. So props are a way that we can pass down information from a parent component down to a child component. So from our app.js file, we have passed down a separate title for each of our buttons. Um, and also pass down a function that we can call to update the total number of clicks across all of our buttons. Um, our button then receives that as this props parameter, um, and then we can access each of those values um, by doing props dot 
whatever we called that prop. So in this case, props.title is going to access that title prop and props.increment num of clicks is going to access that function. Awesome, so hopefully you're feeling a little bit more comfortable with how we uh, manage data in React. So how we can have a component that manages its own state via the use state hook. Uh, or how we can pass props from parent components down to child components. In the next video, we're going to look at synchronizing to those state changes uh, with the use effect hook. I'll see you there.